Hello, my name is Dmitry Kazakov. Uh, I'm a developer in Krita Foundation. In this video, I would like to look at the HDR technology from the side of, uh, of the content artists, or at least how we see it and use it in Krita. As you might know, Krita is a painting application targeted for artists who do concept art, uh, texture, and matte painting. Uh, Krita supported HDR workflow for at least a decade. It was mostly used uh, by 3D artists who wanted to paint their textures or matte painting uh, over shots. That is, they created um, this scene in 3D application like Blender, then exported it into Krita using H EXR file format. Then, uh, it, then they passed it back to um, 3D pipeline. Um, important point here was that Krita was never the final step of the HDR pipeline. The assets, the assets were supposed to be returned back where they were converted into SDR range at the final color grade step, which was usually done in compositing software. And with the appearance of HDR displays, the situation has changed. Now Krita should not only prepare uh, assets for the HDR-based pipeline, but uh, it should also create HDR content that is the final result itself. Uh, and it was implemented in Krita in 2019, so now the user can see the HDR image directly on screen and paint on it. So first about how to prepare HDR content in Krita. If you have an HDR capable display, then creating such content is very easy. You can just use a special HDR capable color selector. You select the desired needs range, the desired bright brightness range, uh, pick any color and paint with it on the canvas. The interesting thing here is that in HDR mode, when you paint on the canvas, you don't paint with color but you paint with light. It looks very interesting and uh, it mostly looks like that special photography style called freeze light when you set your camera to very long exposure like several minutes and highlight the necessary objects with a hand torch. So if you have HDR screen that's very easy but if you have only an SDR screen it is also possible to create HDR content, and that is basically what people did for ages uh, in 3D pipeline. Uh, in Krita, we use Open Color IO technology for this purpose. Open Color IO is uh, a technology used on studios. It is basically a, stand, a set of standardized config files, which are distributed uh, to every workstation in the studio. So every artist working in every software can apply uh, trans the same transfer functions uh, to see HDR assets on the displays in the same way. It might be very... Mm, people might not dislike this comparison, but uh, basically OpenColor.io does the same thing in HDR world that ICC uh, does in legacy SDR world. They are very different, of course, uh, but very roughly we can uh, call them this way. So if you have SDR screen and you want to work with HDR, you just open open color IO uh, Docker and decrease the exposure of the image. In this case, uh, the full range, the full HDR range is compressed into a uh, smaller range to fit the SDR range of the display. At the same time, color selectors, like on the next slide, uh, we have a triangular color selector, which is legacy color selector, so it doesn't support HDR. Uh, this color selector is mapped to the full SDR range of the display. In some terms, it may be called that the image is seen referred, referred and the color selectors are the legacy color selectors are display referred. 
so if you have like like on this uh, image the image the, the exposure of the image is set to three minus 3.5 and if I select white color in the legacy color selector I will basically paint with with a light source of 1000 nits I will see it uh, in Krita I will see it as just white color but if I open the this image in HDR capable uh, on, on, on HDR capable display it will be very bright spot of 1000 nits on the next slide I try to do some illustration of this compression I'm not sure if it helps actually but that's the same what I said the uh, the full range of the image is compressed so and the range of the legacy sliders is not compressed so they start to map to the entire HDR range uh, of course there are some drawbacks in this approach uh, the when the legacy slider uh, legacy color select selectors uh, display referred it means that sometimes we have to convert the color into the display color space which might be more narrow than the HDR color space but in some circ circumstances this is perfectly acceptable for example you have uh, you may have a primarily SDR image which you want which is, which is already finished and you want to adapt it to HDR environment like add some highlights or speculars or make the sun brighter in this case you just open this on a normal SDR display decrease uh, exposure and paint with, paint with normal colors and that's it and you don't really care that your sun will be will belong to rec 709 color space instead of rec 2020 color space the image itself the data in the image is not uh, affected only the colors you highlight with is affected but anyway uh, all these drawbacks do not exist uh, if you have HDR display and use HDR color selectors um, the next point I would like to talk about is exporting HDR content traditionally Krita used open EXR file format for exporting and importing as well um, this is basically a standard for raster data exchange in 3D software world mostly I think majority of 3D packages support that it is a good format for using in-house in studios uh, for intermediate work but this is not very good format for distributing the work uh, the problem is that uh, file format EXR file format does not support any color space tagging it just store, uh, stores raw pixel data in a lossless way and the user is expected to know exactly what this data is and how to deal with that there it is possible to write some extensions via metadata but there is no standard for it that is why it is not good for distributing the work uh, that's why in 2019 uh, Krita started to support HDR extension for PNG file format uh, there is a specification for it by World Wide Web Consortium you can find a link at the bottom of the slide this is a normal PNG file 16-bit uh, PNG file encoded with perceptual quantifier the only difference to a normal file is that its ICCP chunk contains a special fixed string defined by the standard if application uh, supports HDR it should recognize this string and treat the file uh, differently if it is a legacy application and it knows nothing about uh, HDR then there is a special uh, ICC profile attached to this file uh, you cannot represent perceptual quantifier with a with, uh, ICC profile so this is just a fallback profile that should never be used unless you are a legacy application it just uh, dumbly compress the entire ra range into the sRGB space uh, on the next slide you can see the difference at the left the image uh, with uh, just clipped at some area and at the right uh, this image 
shown in 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 uh, with in legacy application with this uh, fallback profile. So yes, you can see all the data, but the image will not look nice. Um, next, I would like to talk about two file formats we are working at the moment. Uh, well, on which support we are working at the moment. We're not working on the file formats themselves, of course. Uh, it's uh, Hive and Aviv. Uh, these file formats support uh, HDR and Krita will do support that. I think this patch will land in a couple of weeks and Krita file, Krita 5 will surely have uh, support on these file formats. The next I would like to say just a few words about implementation of HDR displaying in Krita. First, it is supported only on Windows uh, because we have to use DirectX uh, for that. That was also a problem because Krita's canvas uh, uses OpenGL for rendering uh, image data. Uh, therefore we had to use Angle library by Google which converts OpenGL uh, API into DirectX API. We also had to implement uh, three extensions to this library. These are standard extensions to EGL protocol uh, but they were not present in angle so we had to implement that if you want to know more information about it uh, check additional information section I will put the link uh, to the full article about technical details there and finally I would like to talk about one problem we faced uh, when implementing HDR capabilities in Krita. Uh, that is color proofing or probably for HDR case we should call it uh, light proofing. For example, if I'm an artist and I own a 1000 nits display and I would like to check how my content would look on 400 nits display or on 600 nits, di 100 nits display, right now I cannot do that. That happens because of the technical mm, technical problems uh, which are addressed by the standard. Uh, there is an illustration on the next slide. Uh, you might see the red block, which is actually a problem. We as application, we send data to the uh, DirectX API uh, e in REC 2020 PQ color space and the GPU sends this data to uh, to the display in almost the same color space. Uh, the most important thing for us is that the communication between the GPU and the driver or the GPU and the display uh, is very wide range. Uh, it's uh, 10,000 nits and the display itself, its controller, is free to decide how to convert this wide range of uh, 10,000 nits into the actual uh, brightness range supported by the display, which is usually from 400 nits to 1,000 nits. And we have no control about, uh, we have no control over this transfer function. So basically we don't know how the display will show uh, our color. Uh, in comparison, there is the next slide I tried to draw how it looks in ICC world. We have ICC profile which describes the display uh, for us so we know uh, what color it will be if uh, we send specific RGB value to the display. Of course it also has some its own drawbacks but basically it allows us to do color proofing and there is nothing like that in HDR world. I'm not really sure that this problem can be solved or at least it can be solved easily because I understand that the display controller is allowed to highlight some 
areas on the on the screen or deem some other areas on the screen on the screen and so, so basically the transfer function among the whole surface of the screen may be non-uniform but I think at least it would be very useful for the content creators to have at least some at least some solution to address this problem at least in some way probably not ideal but some approximation well uh, that was everything I wanted to tell uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, or if you have some ideas how to uh, solve this color proofing problem uh, please add your comments or write to me directly there is an email in the uh, first slide and thank you very much for listening have a good day.